Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oshale here and this is Oshi Reads. And in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my reading year last year. It is officially 2018 now and I just want to discuss the reading year that I had in 2017. My Goodreads reading challenge is over and I more than surpassed it. I did amazing. I set a goal to read 200 books in the year of 2017 and I read 232 books which was pretty cool. I feel like I read more than that because I reread a lot and I'm a huge fan of rereading books but I don't always keep track of that and the great thing is that now Goodreads has a feature where you can add more dates that you have read books so when you go and reread a book you can actually add that new date of the reread and that will count towards your reading challenge which I think is amazing but unfortunately that hasn't always been the case and I don't keep track of the books that I reread although I will be changing that this year because I will be doing a lot of rereading in 2018. So as it is early into this new year, I like to take this time to reflect and to look back on the past year, to look at the things I read, to examine my reading habits. I've already done quite a bit of that and I did film a 2018 reading goals video so you can definitely go check that out. I will link that down below. So if you want to check out some of my reading goals for this year, but I also just want to, you know, just take a little bit more of an introspective look into how my reading year went in 2017. The first thing I want to note is that I read 232 books last year, which is amazing. I think I even surpassed 2016. I think I read 220 books in 2016, but 232 books is so great. Definitely more than surpasses my goal of 200 books. And of those 232 books, I found 17 standalone favorites and 10 new series favorites, which I am so excited about. I'm always so happy to add new favorite books to my list. Another reading highlight is of those 232 books that I read, so many of them, I would actually say the majority of them were either self-published authors, otherwise known as indie authors, or they were books published by very small publishing houses. So I am a huge supporter of self-publishing here on my channel. You will notice that a lot of the authors that I promote, that I talk about. A lot of the books that I read are by self-published authors and indie authors. I just feel that it's important to support authors that are doing their own thing, that are taking a leap of faith out of the usual publishing model, and are basically just putting themselves out there and doing so well. And not only meeting expectations and surviving and making a living, but they're exceeding expectations and having best-selling novels. That is so amazing. My next reading highlight of 2017 is that I discovered so many new authors that I didn't know about before, especially with the African American literature that I read or African American fiction, whatever you want to call it. I found so many new favorite authors that I will now always look for their new releases and I'm so excited to add them to my list of favorite authors. Christina C. Jones, Love Belvin, Be Love, Jacintha Howard, Jai Brine, Nia Forrester, Maureen Smith, Joel E. Ann, Dylan Allen, Kennedy Ryan, and so, so many more. The last reading highlight that I want to discuss with you guys is that the books that I loved, I really, really loved. I mean, really loved. Like, became obsessed with, totally just blew my mind, blew my expectations out of the water. And then... I didn't really read any books that I hated. Like there were no books that I was like, oh, that was terrible, I hated it. I noticed that I gave a lot of three stars and for me three stars is a solid satisfactory read and I find that a lot of my reads were solid and satisfactory. They weren't like, oh, horrible or disappointing. It was just like, this was a good book. This was a good experience. I enjoyed this story. And then there were the books that I loved that I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. Now I want to talk about my reading lows of 2017 or things that I'm not quite, you know, happy with about my reading year. The first thing is that I stayed in my little reading box. I read primarily new adult slash adult romance books in 2017 with a few YA books thrown in. Now I've been doing this since about 2011 when I discovered the new adult genre, but I've been reading romance novels since I was a kid. So I just hate that I didn't stray too far outside of my box. I miss reading other genres and so this was kind of a reading low for me in 2017. Another reading low is that although I read 232 books, I wasn't really truly moved by as many books as you would think given the fact that 
232 books is a heck of a lot of books. You know, you would think that I would have been moved by more books than I was, and I just wasn't. Like I said before in my reading highlights, my last point is that most of my reads were satisfactory, and I gave a lot of three stars to a lot of books. And while, yes, that can be considered a highlight because there were no truly disappointing reads or reads that I hated, it can also be looked as a low as well because it's kind of like everything was just kind of middle of the road, satisfactory, nothing too thrilling or too moving. Everything was just kind of okay. It was just kind of average. And that can be a low as well. Another reading low is that I didn't learn as much as I would have liked. You know, like out of all those books, there wasn't much new information that my brain was gathering, you know, here and there. And those books definitely became my favorites out of the reads of the year. But in all, I just wish I had learned more and I had discovered more. And going hand in hand with not really learning a lot and not really moving out of my comfort zone and not really reading outside of the genre that I chose, the new adult slash adult romance genre, even the YA genre is that I didn't take my mind to the really tough, uncomfortable places that you can take your mind to when you read outside of your comfort zone, when you push your boundaries, when you read new things. I didn't read those tough, uncomfortable books and take my mind to those places that is required for you to grow and learn. So those two definitely go hand in hand and that's definitely something I'm going to be changing this year in 2018. All in all, I think all of my lows can be categorized under the overarching fact that I didn't read outside of my comfort zone in 2017, and I am genre deficient. There are so many other genres that I want to explore that I've loved growing up. I loved reading classics. I loved re reading mysteries and thrillers. I loved reading science fiction. I loved reading children's lit. I loved reading nonfiction, and that has all been lost over the years. I would say from about 2011 up until 2017, I have definitely lost a lot of my curiosity. I have lost a lot of my desire to push boundaries and to read outside of the box. And I want to work actively to gain that back in 2018. I want to challenge myself and I want to surprise myself in what I pick up to read. So with that said, I have set my Goodreads goal at 80 books. For 2018. I want to read less books. I want to read more intentionally. I want to push myself. I want to surprise myself and I want to read outside of my comfort zone. That is my main goal for 2018 and just it's good to reflect. It's good to reflect on what you're reading. It's good to look back and really examine the whys of why you're reading what you're reading and I've just found that in the past few years I've adopted reading for entertainment value more than reading for content and for reading for analytical value. I think it's all important. I think there's definitely a time and a place for all of it, but I think things can become really unbalanced when all you're doing is reading for entertainment. You need to find ways to also read for critical and analytical value. You need to find ways to read for knowledge, to find ways to read for growth. You need to push yourself in your reading and really find books that are going to grow you as a person. I think that when your hobby is reading, it can get very comfortable and easy and you can just kind of lock yourself into this box and not push yourself. I think it's very easy to fall into kind of mass consumption in your reading where when you find one thing you like you just try to find other books like that and that's all you read and you're just kind of consuming things on a purely entertainment level so that's why I think it's important to bring the intellectualism back into your reading and to make sure that you are growing yourself as well not just as a reader but just as a person so that's it for this video. Definitely share some of your reading highlights of 2017 with me and some of your 2018 reading goals down in the comment section. And yeah, it was a good reading year all in all, but it was way too much of the same and I'm definitely looking to shake things up in 2018. 2018 is going to be an amazing year for all of us and not just in reading. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely check me out here for my next video, which will be coming very soon. And I will see you guys later. Love you guys. I will catch you in my next video. Bye. Bye, guys. To know the Biafran War was a huge deal and definitely affected a lot of our older family members, especially if you lived in the southeastern part of the country. That war was just brutal and there are still so many effects felt from it to this day in Nigeria. I don't know much about it as I did not spend most of my formative years in Nigeria. My family moved here to the United States in 1994. So there's a lot about Nigerian history that I just don't.